Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 45 of my Hulkbuster build, which I've got here, and it's facing the other way at the moment because last time, the episode I've just finished filming, I was sorting out the ankle locks, which are right down at the bottom. So I tried to walk in this suit and found I couldn't move sideways enough to shift my weight to walk. So I cut the ankles off and installed some locks in, which I did in the last two videos. But this time, we're going to get back to some serious robotics and some serious mechanics, and we're going to sort out the helmet. So this is going to lift up and the faceplate's going to open, but I've never installed any motors in. So we're going to sort out some serious gears, which I'm going to 3D print, hopefully, and we're going to get that functional today. Hello. Well, I've put this all back on the work, mate, so I can reach it. So uh, what we've got is this whole helmet lifts up. And we've also got the faceplate retracts within that, so that can lift in as this can go up. And I want to bring it back to about that sort of height. I've also got these little things which are on servos, which come backwards. So I need to motorise them as well, although that's not too tricky. So those come forwards just as this comes, so they pass within the shoulder plates here. And obviously uh, the faceplate lastly goes down, so we need basically a two-stage sort of lifter. Round the back here, the whole helmet is attached to the frame with these clamps. I have got screw holes to screw or bolt this on. I probably need something that um, locates it at least. Uh, the clamps are quite useful or having some means of detaching it for transport. And also I can't put the helmet on the top and put the legs on because it's too tall. So uh, what we've got um, and what I designed into this are these levers which pull this backwards. So I quite like to counterweight or counter spring these. Putting weight on isn't a very good idea but we could put some springs on so this kind of floats and then we don't have too much trouble with actuating it. I've 3D printed some gears, so I've got a really big gear here which is the main output shaft and that's going to have a lever on it that pushes the helmet up. Another one with two gears on, so these will run like so. And then a really small one that's going to go on the motor and what I've done there is uh, basically stuck a captive nut into that gap there. And I've sawn off the end of an M4 bolt and cut a slot in it to make a grub screw so I can tighten that up so that fits nicely onto the flat of this motor shaft. That's a 4mm shaft and I can tighten that up and that's nice and fixed on there and then that will run this gear and that gives me two stages of reduction so the small gear turning this big gear means that the middle of this goes much slower than the middle of this and that in turn then drives this one and gears down again each time increasing torque as well this is my main output shaft so let's see where those are going to fit okay so my head actually rests on two posts that you can probably see here so I'm going to replace one of those with the big gear so that big gear is going to sit just in there and the output shaft is going to push this lever all the way up. The next gear of course is going to go just behind it one way around or the other so those should sit nicely in there and then the one on the motor is going to sit behind and they should all sit there hopefully and then the effect is pushing this upwards of course these sticks are going to be balanced backwards with springs or bungees so hopefully it should just be a case of moving it and I won't need too much torque out of these. This motor is already geared to, uh, it's a 30 to 1, so it's pretty quick. It already has a gear head on it, so I'm hoping that's going to be enough torque and it should be just about the right speed. Here's my gearbox assembly. It's fairly simplistic. It's two sides and a base. The base, of course, has this larger part on to mount the motor on the small gear, and the other gears there have got um, just holes to stick some steel shafts through. So I am going to probably make some spacers to keep them in the right place, but we'll see how it goes when it's together. And uh, basically these side pieces slot into slots in the base, and that'll be solvent welded together. And I've got two screw holes there to screw it to the wood. So I'll get those printed and hopefully all those gears will run well together. So here's my gearbox, uh, mostly assembled. I need some spaces still in there. So um, obviously this gear turns this gear and this gear turns this gear. 
So um, you can see this one's going much quicker than this one is. And if I just turn on this motor, which goes pretty quick, and stick it on here, we can see that whole thing turns. So this has got quite a bit of torque compared to this, which I can just stop. So that's probably enough. It is a bit fast, so I could um, either add more stages or use a slightly slower, higher torque, maybe 100 to 1 instead of 30 to 1 motor there. Um, what I could probably do with doing is stopping some of the wobble in this big gear, because it's only thin, obviously the hole has to be so loose so that it works. So I probably need to print one with a lump on top that's effectively a spacer that fills that gap. This one is much more rigid because it's got this piece on, so it doesn't wobble so much on the shaft, but again I need a spacer. I um, also need to print a motor mount that holds this motor in exactly the right place. Obviously it can't mount just on that base, it needs to be slightly higher. So we'll get those pieces sorted and put it all together. Hopefully that should be enough to at least move the faceplate and of course remember it's going to be spring balanced so it doesn't actually need that much torque. Okay, I've fitted a, sp a spacer on this gear, so there's a gear with the spacer attached and I've put a little black spacer in there so these gears don't wobble. This gear is much better on its shaft than it was. So let's just power that up. So there's a bit of a rattle in it every so often, so it's only ever going to turn around 180 degrees and um, it's actually got quite a lot of torque there. So I'm going to try and uh, make a lever to make that lift the faceplate now. Alright, so I've installed this crank arm, which is uh, this thing here. And you'll notice that I've bent it slightly. So let's just roll this round. And that's so it can go the other side of the hub of that gear and still remain facing upright. I've then got this piece, which has a hole in. And that fits like this. So I need to bend the crank arm again to go in there. And that sits just there. And this will be solvent welded onto the lever on the, the whole helmet. In fact, it goes that way round. Um, so I need to get that sorted and then I can screw this down. And I've put an extra block on the bottom with some screw holes to help screw that onto the piece of wood. So let's get that installed and we'll see if it can actually lift the helmet. So I've installed the mechanism. Um, it's pretty hard to see from here, so we'll turn it around in a minute. But I just wanted to point out these bungees that I've put in and I've put some 3D printed brackets in. So we've got a bungee pulling these sticks back on both sides. So that helps just lift it initially, but the motor is more than powerful enough to lift it. Okay, so here it is all mounted. I've replaced the piece of metal with a 3D printed shaft that's got that shape in to go around the, uh, the hub of the big motor there. So it's a bit like a sort of crank shaped shaft. And um, this works quite well. So if I just roll this manually, hopefully see that bringing the helmet down. And the, uh, it wants to pop up because it's sprung, but the crank here fits right round the shaft. And eventually, it sort of locks in place by going slightly too far. You just bring the camera around and we can see that. So it's actually behind the motor shaft in there. Let's just bring that out again, you can see it. So this shape fits round and it goes all the way back behind the hub and locks it in place. Um, of course the faceplate will be down at that point as well, so it'll um, give us some extra ability to have the weight holding that down. For now it works pretty well, so I'm just going to run that with a motor, which also works. Let me just put the faceplate back so you can see it. So I've got um, the motor with just a LiPo connected. It's definitely got enough power to turn it. And back down again. quite hard because of the back drive, but we'll solve that with some magnetic braking probably, so it locks the motor in place as well. But there's definitely enough power in my gear train, so that's pretty good. So what we need to do next is have a look at how the faceplate is pulled up, probably with a lever on here that gets pulled down as the helmet goes up. And we also need some sort of control system and some position feedback so we know when to start and stop the motor. To lift the faceplate, I've just added another lever, which is this white lever, and it goes up to an extension of the faceplate uh, mechanism. So as I wind this up and down, I don't know if that makes it any clearer to see, it actually lifts the faceplate as well. So this is the faceplate lever, and it's now extended down here. So let's show that from a long shot.
So what I've got set up here is an Arduino Uno and I really need to stop putting Arduinos in this suit and sort out the control system but for now I'm just going to demonstrate how this works with another Arduino. I've also got an L298 motor driver you can pick up pretty cheap and that will drive two motors, only need one in this case. So I've got two PWM pins that are essentially analog pins going from the Arduino into there. Uh, at the moment this is powered off USB but I've got VIN and ground wired to the same VIN for the motor input so this will be powered off one LiPo. The Arduino has an onboard regulator that is the V in, not the 5 volt pin. I also have a potentiometer here, which is going to measure the helmet position. It's on a bracket ready to go on the back. Um, and I'm reading those into an analog pin. So the either side of the wiper, or at least either side of the pot, is connected to 0 and 5 volts. And the wiper um, then varies in voltage as you turn it. So that's connected to analog 0. And uh, if we just come along here and have a look on my laptop screen, hopefully you can see a value getting written to the serial terminal and as I turn the pot, that should go from 0 to 1023, which is 10-bit resolution. So I can use that to work out where the helmet is and decide which way to turn it uh, based on a button press. I've mounted my Arduino and so on on the back of the suit here. It's just temporarily with one screw, just so I can get this set up. As I said, I will come and do a proper control system for this. There's more in here, which is a total mess, so I need to sort something out, really, in the long run. But for now, it's good enough to set this up and get the code working. So I've got my potentiometer mounted here, which is mounted on the axis of the uh, helmet pivoting back. So I've got this clamp, which I've put in here, and if we just zoom in on that, it's kind of a split piece of plastic, and it's solvent welded onto the post here. I have got a thing I can put a bolt in to squeeze it, but it's actually pretty... Um, pretty tight on the knob of the pot basically and the back of the pot is bolted onto this bracket fixed onto the actual hinge point so uh, the result of this is let's just get the zoom just right so you can see as I wind the gears you should see that this part of the pot turns against the middle um, and I've still got my Arduino on a very long cable onto my laptop there so I can see uh, what the value is for the maximum and minimum travel. And this is the actual output shaft effectively of the um, actual whole helmet turning rather than the one on the gear. So it, basically that's the actual position it's measuring from that helmet being up and down rather than somewhere further back the gear train with all of that backlash between gears and things. So this should be a pretty accurate way to measure it. So now I just need to write some code which will use the L298 to drive the motor and I've attached two buttons, so I can press one to open and one to close, and it should drive it to the two end positions that I've just measured on there. I've now written all the code to control that helmet based on the potentiometer value and the switch inputs. So first of all, I've uh, declared some integers there. So I've declared the analog pin is pin zero. I've declared a val variable for the actual value that it gets, um, which is an integer between zero and 1023. And the two button values here. So these are uh, declared as inputs pull ups. So you wire them to ground and otherwise they go high. So they start off as one and when they're triggered they go to zero. I've declared five and six as outputs. I'm using actually the digital write in this case, but I could use them as analog outputs because those are PWM pins. So I could do speed control, like acceleration, ramp up and ramp down if I wanted in the future. I've declared A0 as the analog input, although I don't think I need to because those are basically fixed analog inputs on the board. So uh, first of all, in the main loop, I'm reading that analog read into the val variable from the analog pin, which is declared as zero. I'm also still printing this to the serial console if I want to do debugging or see what the value is. I'm also reading the two digital buttons into two variables called but1 and but2. Um, and the rest of the loop is pretty simple. Um, I'm just saying there, if one of the buttons is pressed, if but1 is zero, then while the value is bigger than the lowest point, which I... Um, looked at that debug terminal to see what it was and it was 357 then write one of the pins high and the other one low and that makes the L298 turn the motor in one direction um, on each of these while loops we need to read the value so we can actually see what it is so the while loop knows what it is so it can keep doing that while it's a certain value um, so that's what that is if the other button is pressed it does the other thing so um, it basically sees if it's smaller than the highest value, which was 472, and writes the other pin high. Um, and again, in each um, iteration of the while loop, it reads that pin to monitor it to see what the position is. Um, and otherwise else, 
If it's neither of those, then turn the motor off by writing both outputs low. And that also does a bit of magnetic braking by grounding both of the motor pins so magnetic flux can't flow back the other way and um, turn that motor back like we saw in the example where I was fishing around with crocodile clips. So I've programmed that up, let's see what it does. My motor is wired up, it's all just connected with crocodile clips at the moment. So I've got that con these green crocodile clips connected to the motor and the output of the L298. And obviously the potentiometer and the switches are wired and I've put the switches on quite long wires. Um, so now um, if I press one of them, I don't know which one it is, apparently it's that one, then it turns the whole mechanism till it reads this maximum value, which I think was 457 of the pot, then it stops. And it stops fairly abruptly as well with uh, shorting that motor out. If I press the other one, then it goes down and stops and it locks it by putting, um, as I said, that lever right back behind the spindle. So this is actually locked down now so it won't, won't wobble open if I'm uh, walking along. And this side correctly comes down to its post, so that's pretty good. Super, so let's have a look at that from the front. Hello! So yeah, my head does fit in, the gearbox is just there, so I probably need a shield or something over that. Um, I have my hair cut specially so my hair doesn't get caught in it, but I'm pretty happy with that overall. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I need to do something about the servos that operate these little flaps that you can see, but that's pretty easy to control, and that will come when I do the main control system. The other thing, of course, is to have the lights turn on in the eyes and all of that stuff, which is currently controlled from one of the Arduinos down here. And again, that'll be built into the suit eventually. But there we go, it seems to work pretty well. I'm gonna decorate the inside of the helmet with lots of stuff, so when it's open, it looks good. Uh, but for now, I'm pretty happy with the way that works. That's the end of this part. Next time, I'm going to be doing something else with some serious mechanics in, some more electronics and coding. And if you like this sort of thing, don't forget to check out Project Ultron, which is going on in my channel, and also my Star Wars BB-8 droid and R6 droids, which are entirely 3D printed and have lots of mechanics and electronics and coding in as well. If you'd like to help support the channel, then check out patreon.com slash xrobots where you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including all my videos early, typically my Tuesday main build videos come out the weekend before for patrons only, and a live broadcast with me, so don't forget to check that link out. And if you help fund this channel to as little as $1 a month, you can get access to those rewards. Okay, so don't forget to check out the social media links in the description to this video, and also the other projects in my channel. That's all for now.